All right, so in the last video, I expanded on some of my inspirations by using some AI and just playing. So I'm going to bring those AI images in. And I'm going to put them just near the bottom here. And I'm going to flip them to kind of match the orientation of what I want to draw. Because I, I kind of like some of the hair in these. I don't know if I like the green eyebrows, but it's something. And then some of the AI that came from my guided generation of image, right? When I put in an image and then merged it with my prompt. And you can see that these images owe a lot to the guiding image I put in. All right, now, just like I did before, I'm going to merge all of those layers and I can go to layer merge or the shortcut is command E and I'm just going to call this AI inspiration but I really treat it just like any photo I found made by someone else because even though it was created by a computer instead of an artist I know it wasn't created by me right but I can use it to to shape my work so on my speed painting here, I'm using my brush and I'm just using a standard hard round pressure size brush. I'm using it at 100% hardness at a pretty large size because it's pressure sensitive, right? So I can go from thin to thick, but I'm only using it at about a 70% opacity. And that's so whenever the, the paint strokes overlap, you get new colors. And I'm building it just on a white background for now. And the key is to have energy. Now, I had energy and I put this down. Now I need to get it back into that mindset to work on this, this base painting a little bit more. But this, this AI has given me kind of freedom in some of its shapes to have more fun with the hair. Because he kind of just looks like a, a round-headed doll or something. And I'm going to have more fun with this crazy hair. I can also use it to get colors. And remember, you hold down Option and you can steal the color. So I'm going to throw some, some weird colors where they don't belong, like reds and greens in the hair, along with the blonde and the orange. And then I like this idea of like this blue eye shadow around the eyes and this really bold red in the mustache and maybe having a little bit more fun with the mustache. And the one thing I'm trying to avoid doing is just using solid black. So even if there's black in your models, you'll notice they're all versions of something. And it's really nice to use like a deep blue or a deep purple instead of black. But you do want to establish what they call in art the darkest dark, even if it's not solid black. And I can look at my photo reference to kind of help get an idea of that. All right, now at this point, before I move on to more thoughtful and careful painting, I'm still trying to just use all this energy. The next thing I do is I take the advantages of digital art. You know, because everything I'm doing here, I could just do with acrylic paint on a canvas or on a piece of paper. I could do with markers. There's nothing that says I need digital for this. So let's take advantage of digital a little bit. And I painted and I just kind of created my forms. 
But now I can judge them a little bit. And it's all on one layer. So what I'm going to do is just make a duplicate of that, turn off the one underneath, and then hit Command T. And I'm going to hold down Shift and just distort it a little bit. So I'm going to make it narrower. I might make it bigger. I might tilt it. I might right click and warp it. This is all stuff you can't do with traditional art. So if I think, oh, I want his hairline to be a little bit higher on that side. This is how you kind of turn it into more of a caricature where you can really play with it. And I haven't given him much room for his neck at all. So what I might do at this stage is just kind of cut it up with my lasso. This is all just loose painting. This is why it's nice sometimes not to have to work underneath line art. And then I transform that individually. You know, I might move it down and then warp it, change its proportions. I might angle it a little differently because it, it's kind of nice to have his head thrown back. I like that. Give some room for the neck. Maybe I stretch it out. And maybe I play with... Oh, no, I think his, his eye is fine. I can move his, his eye around, his nose around and stuff, but it's easier. That's all just on one layer just to keep painting. So now I'm just going to fill that in. Stint his nose a little bit. Or shine on the forehead and around the eye. Then I'm going to open his mouth. And even though my brush is quite big, if I want thinner lines, I just don't press as hard. But I'm really just trying to fill in space right now. Just like doing flats in digital coloring. You don't want to get stuck on details. Then I'm going to throw in just some other shapes. Some tones. All right. So why did I do it on a duplicate? Well, you can see it was like this. And then just with some simple warping, I can really change what I do with those same shapes. And now this becomes my base paint layer. Does that make sense? Very helpful. Also much better than rotoscoping. So what's the rotoscoping method? This is if you're just not very confident in your expressive capabilities, right? I'm going to copy one major photo, duplicate it. I have to unlock it to duplicate, right? Then I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it onto oops, my painting area. And even though it's low resolution, I'm going to transform it to be the size I want to paint like that. Right. And then I can take its opacity down. And then what rotoscoping is, is you make a new layer and you just paint directly on top of it. So the sketch method to start would be, I would use a much thinner, smaller brush and I might use like a lighter color, and then I would kind of analyze it. Okay, I'd say, oh, here's his cranium. Here's the direction, which is called kind of the action line of his eyes. Here are his eyebrows. 
We're just painting right on top of the photo reference. This is like that Beyonce kind of airbrushed one that's in the assignment directions as an example. So one is shape-based painting, and this is more sketch-based. This is more analytical, the other is more synthetic. If you're looking at art history approaches. He has that, that big 70s collar. That could be fun to play with. Now what's helpful about this is it can show you things about your subject, whether it's an animal or a person, you know, that you might not have really been paying attention to. And then the mustache, all right here. So basic shapes. What does it look like without the photo? It looks like that. So then rotoscoping might also mean that I paint directly on top of it. I could even steal colors and then paint. And there are even tools in Photoshop that I'm not going to go into, but if you want to play with them, they're called the mixer brush, which will, all with one tool, steal a color from a layer underneath and paint it onto the layer you're on. And they're kind of just custom made for rotoscoping. So that you're kind of filling in the colors in the areas as you go. And if you have real trouble seeing where shadows are, trying to figure out their colors, that's a way you can go, but it's, it's very limited to that one photo, right? But what I can do is I can use these two together. And I can take, let's see, this sketch. And I can layer it. Let's try to make it really, really clear. There we go with, with uh, color dodge. And now I can stretch my sketch and kind of use it over my shape painting. And now to finish up my speed painting, what I'm going to do is just carve away with my lasso things that fall really far outside of the sketch. What I'm doing is basically kind of tightening it up. I could also just move things around, like this tie. The thing I drew really goes right there, instead of where I had it. And now this is a good base layer that I'm going to build up on. Does that kind of make sense? All right. So now I'm going to lock all of these. And I'm going to move on to my next step. I can even keep this rotoscope layer there, but just have it turned off for now. My next step is going to be a new layer, and I'm going to call this refined paint. And for this, I'm not just going to use the default brush. This is where most digital painters have their favorite brushes or favorite brush. Now, if you look in Photoshop, they have some defaults like their dry media brushes and their wet media brushes, their special effect brushes. But what we're going to do is learn how to create our own brush. So to do that, save your work. You can just leave it open in Photoshop. You're going to say File New. And I do not know if this works the same in Procreate. But you can do something similar in Photo P that I'll be demoing this afternoon. For this new Photoshop file, I'm just going to call it SP24 Adobe, that's this section, Carl Brush, right? And I'm going to make it not in inches, but in pixels, because a good size for brush design is 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. Now, what we're designing is the tip of a brush. And you want to click on your default so it's black on white. You want to use your, your uh, paintbrush and you want to set it at a size. I'm just using the hard round. I want it to be pressure sensitive. And you can set it at a, a high opacity or a low opacity. I'm going to have it at a pretty high hardness. This is basically